Good morning, church. Today we worship our God the first day of the week. But on this particular day, it's also Mother's Day. And we'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. We're thankful for all the women who care for us and take care of us. The Bible has many things to say about mothers, and one of those is in Proverbs 31, 27 through 31, and we'll read it now. It says, She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done ex excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her at the gates. Let us bow and say a prayer before our lesson this morning. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for this day that we can come and worship you. We also want to remember the many mothers out there. We pray that you give them strength, that you help them through this trying time. We also ask that you guide many people who are sick and in bad health, uh, who are having financial difficulties. Um, some are having mental uh, stress in their lives because of the situation we find ourselves in. We pray that you guide them all and that you strengthen them. We see also ask, O oh Lord, that uh, things get back to normal soon, that we can be in the same building to worship together, even though as of now we worship together in truth and spirit. We ask you to be with us all. We ask you to strengthen us, and we ask you to keep us safe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first song is Great is Thy Faithfulness. To me, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with me. God's angels smile, no compassion to save.
Number 348, Jesus is all the world to me. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. To me, Jesus is all the world to me. trial number 328. The third verse in speaking of Christ going to Gethsemane and to uh, the cross. And so we'll finish with verse 3 and omit verse 4. Before the sermon, we'll sing 798, Yield Not to Temptation.
Well, good morning. Glad to see each and every one of you this morning. I hope this finds you doing well. We want to say happy Mother's Day to the mothers that we have in our congregation. Thank you for your love, your dedication, and your sacrifice to us as children. You know, it's very interesting that Mother's Day is not that old. It's really only 106 years old by proclamation. It started early in the 1900s by a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis. After the death of her mother in 1905, she wanted to have a way for children to celebrate their mothers. And so with the backing in 1908 of a Philadelphia department store owner named John Wanamaker, she was able to organize a Mother's Day event. That event was started in 1908 in West Virginia. By 1912, many states, towns, and even churches had picked up the day and had adopted it as Mother's Day as a holiday in their town. And at that time, Jarvis organized an association called the Mother's Day International Association to help promote her cause. And that went all the way up to the upper echelons of our government. And in 1914, the president, Woodrow Wilson, signed the official measure making the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. And even though this holiday is new to the United States of America in a sense, it is not new to God. For you will remember in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, when the children of Israel were given the Ten Commandments, commandment number five was honor your father and mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God will give you. Here we see that God ties it to them continuing to stay in the land. It was an important emphasis to God that those people honor their father and their mother every day of their lives. Jesus will give the same type of thought when we come to Matthew chapter 15. In Matthew chapter 15, starting that about verse 4, we find out that he is in a discussion with the religious leaders. They are trying to accuse him of wrongdoing. And Jesus will use this to show that they are actually the ones who are doing wrong against God. They are the ones who are sinning against him. He says there in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 4, For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever that I would have help you has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or his mother. And by this, you invalidate the word of God for the sake of your tradition. See, Jesus shows their true nature in the fact that they did not want to honor their father and mother, but they only said, the things that I have, I have given it to God. Now, they had not really given it to God. They had only used their mouths. They were lying about it. But God didn't like that. God wanted them to honor their father and their mother all the days of their lives. Also, when you turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 19, you remember the rich young ruler and how that he was discussing with him about the commandments. And Jesus will tell him in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17, if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And the ruler will then, of course, ask the question, which ones? And in verse 18, Jesus, in response to the question, says, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. As Jesus tells this ruler, it needs to be understood by us in our day and time that Jesus expects this to be done and that these commandments that he gives here are still valid for us today. We need to make sure that we are honoring Father God by honoring our mother not just one day as proclaimed by the government, but all the days of our lives. This is truly a life that is pleasing to God. And God does not qualify 
in there, honor mother if she was a good mother. It is unfortunate that we have some that did not have good mothers. And I know at this time of year, it can become a thought that might be hard to wrap your brain around. But I would say to you that you need to honor mother and ask God for wisdom. Pray to him and ask him how that you can do that in good conscience because he truly has the answer. If you had a mother that was a God-fearing mother, then you are a child that is truly blessed. And God wants you to make sure that you understand that it is your responsibility also to honor mother not one day a year, but all the days of your life. As we have come to this day, Mother's Day in our country, our thoughts are on our mothers, whether they are living or they are deceased. This morning, for a moment of our time, I would like to talk about what makes a good mother. Because I doubt that there's any mother that wants to become a bad mother. As we learn to honor our mothers, we need to learn what God requires of mothers. When we turn to a passage like in Luke chapter 1, we find an example of a good mother. A woman who didn't expect to be a mother. When we come to Luke chapter 1, starting there about verse 26, we learn about a lady by the name of Mary. You know, last week we learned about the exiles. And we learned that God sent them away. It was by his power that they were sent away because of their sin. God caused this to happen. When we look here in Luke and read in about verse 26 and going forward, we find out that God is causing this to happen. That Mary is called like an Old Testament prophet to fulfill a task of God. Now, those Old Testament prophets were sent out to give the word to the people. Mary is going to be given the task of being a mother to the Son of God. And that's what we learn about Mary. First and foremost is that she gave herself to the Lord and his word first. As you come to verse 26, we find out that Gabriel comes in her presence now, he's not one that is a spirit. He's not dressed in white. He's not floating around. But if you'll notice in verse 28, it says that in coming in, he said to her, greetings, favor one, the Lord is with you. Gabriel is an angel who appears as a man and gives good words to Mary. He tells her in verse 30, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. Here we see Gabriel giving the future of the son, that will come to Mary. And of course, Mary does not ask about that future, but she asks, how can this be in the next verse since she's never been with a man? And we understand that, that that would be a question that any woman would have. And of course, we see that Gabriel will go on and tell her that she is gonna have a child by the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her. And that child will be named Jesus, which is a form of Joshua. And in the Greek is translated, the Lord saves. And with all of these things on this day, as Gabriel has come to her, I love verse 38. Verse 38, and Mary said, behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Notice the faith that Mary has. That's the reason why I said for the first point, she gives herself to the Lord first in his word. She's not a mother at this point. She had not planned to be a mother at this point. 
But as she is told what God is going to use her for a task, she says in verse 38, may it be done to me according to your word. Mary is answering the call of God and is ready to do what God has asked of her. She is a woman who has faith to understand. She has a believing faith and an active faith. And she is going to do what God wants her to do. Compare that to one we find here and also in Luke chapter one. The faith of Zacchaeus, a man who is a priest who will be the father of John the Baptist, a man who is serving in the temple. And when he is told about that he is going to have a son, his response in verse 18 is this. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this for certain? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. See, he didn't have the same words that Mary had. Mary said, let this be done to me. Zacharias wanted a sign. Well, he got a sign. As you go on and read here in the verses, we find out that he is not going to be able to speak until John is born. And his uh, tongue is not going to be loose until John is born. And they ask him what the child shall be named. And he says, his name shall be John. Now, Zacharias was not a bad guy. The fact is that his faith just did not carry him to the place that Mary's was. He didn't believe and have the active faith. He will suffer for the months that his wife Elizabeth is pregnant as he is mute, thinking about what he really should have said. And this does not mean that Zacharias was a bad person because he had the wrong conclusion at this point. Because we see others in the Old Testament. I think about Moses, for example, as he was standing around that burning bush, as he was talking to God and God giving him the words that the task and the words that he wanted him to do. We find out that Moses was full of excuses. Zacharias will continue to be used for the Lord as he raises up John in the word of the Lord. But it's very interesting that Mary gave herself to the Lord first and his words, even before becoming a mother. Secondly, I'd have you think about Mary and the fact that as a mother, she believed in God's power. She believed in God's power. If you turn over to a passage like John chapter two, and you look there in John chapter two, verses one through 11, we find out that a wedding is happening in Cana. Cana is a city located about four miles from Nazareth. And we don't know that if this is a relative of hers or someone close to the family, but what we find out is evidently she's a part of the wedding planning committee. As she has found out that they have run out of wine and she tells this to Jesus. And she knows the power of, in her faith that Jesus has. I'd have you notice verse five, if you will. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Mary has all the confidence in the world in the son of God, in her physical son, Jesus Christ, to accomplish the task. She didn't try to micromanage the task. She just, in a sense, gave it to God and let it alone. As you know, these water pots, as you see here in the book of John, were for purification. And they were quite large pots, 20 to 30 gallons each. And they were never used for wine. They never had a drop of wine in there. But what we, of course, find out is that Jesus listens to his mother and shows honor to her by fulfilling her wish And that's what we need to learn about Jesus is that in his day and time as he walked on the earth, he honored his mother because she honored him. He makes everything better if someone is willing to ask. That's what we see about Jesus is that he wanted to make sure that he honored her because she honored him. 
But thirdly, I'd say to you, when we turn here in the book of John to chapter 19, we find out a mother who is committed to God to the end of her life. John chapter 19 and verse 23, we find Jesus being hung on the cross of Calvary. Now, I've never experienced the pain of losing a child. I have experienced the pain of having a sick child, and that was enough. And for those of you mothers who have lost a child, let me say my sympathies are with you even this day if it happened many years ago. Because it is a pain that pierces to your soul. There is a hole that is left there that will never be filled. And Mary is experiencing this this day. Her son, who is innocent, is hanging on a cross. As she looks at the blood coming out of his body as he has had the crown of thorns, as he has been whipped and sees the scars on his body. I wonder as you stood there underneath the cross here in John chapter 19, verses 23 through 30, if she thought back through her memories to the days when he was just a baby. It's very interesting that Mark Lowry and Buddy Green wrote a song that talked about those days in the very beginning, a song that you're probably familiar with, Mary, Did You Know? And I don't want to read all the lyrics to the song, but just a few that bring to our attention the greatness of Jesus. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. I'm sure that those scenes went back to Luke chapter one that we read just a few moments ago. As she is told about what Jesus will do in the future. But now the day is here. He is hanging on that cross, blood dripping. And we once again see the character of Jesus in the fact that he honors his mother. When you look down here in John chapter 19, you see in verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. Lastly, when we think about Mary, I'd have you think about the fact that she continued on. Losing a child is awful. And there have been some mothers who have wanted to give up on God because of this. But when we come to Acts chapter one, looking there, at verses 12 through 14, Mary was not one who did that. She was one who was there in verse 14 in the upper room. It says there in Acts chapter one and verse 14, these all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. Mary could have used excuses to walk away from God, but she chose not to. Mary could have said, I didn't realize when this task was given to me that I would have to pay such a price as a mother. She didn't use that. She continued to serve her God. I think about those words that Gabriel gave to her in Luke chapter one and verse 30 when he says to her, you have found favor with God. I think we can see now why it is that God chose her because she gave herself first to God in his word, gave herself first to the Lord. And then when she became a mother, she believed in God's power. And then thirdly, a mother who is committed to God to the end of her life. 
You know, it's unfortunate that many mothers in our nation don't teach their children about God's word. They don't dedicate themselves to God first. And they look at the Bible as being outdated and not worth reading or learning or teaching to their children. And it's unfortunate that many mothers are leading their families to destruction. They will use any excuse in the book to stop them from doing what is best for their family. They're more concerned about what's on Facebook. They're more concerned about what's on Twitter, what's on the TV. Or they just say they're just tired. They don't want to give any more effort. And I hope and pray that this is not your attitude. I hope as ladies who are not mothers at the moment that you are doing exactly what Mary did. She gave herself first to the Lord. She gave herself first to God and his word. You should be preparing for that day when you become a mother by understanding God's word. And if you are a mother now, and maybe you have been letting those things of the world come in, I hope that you will recognize that. Because if you have been blessed with children, you have been blessed with the greatest gift that God has ever given. And it is your responsibility as a mother to take care in those spiritual needs, to train them up in the ways of God. And we can all lose focus. We can all lose what is really important. So I'd say to you, talk to God. Pray to him. Let him know that you have let things come in the way. And then show your children God's power in your life. Teach them about God's ways as you live because that's what they need. And it doesn't make any difference the age of your children. Just because they're not in the house doesn't mean that you stop being a mother. Now, you have to let them go. I understand that. And you can't micromanage them. I understand that. But you can continue to teach them about God's power in life and teach grandchildren. And you say to me, well, I'm a woman, but I don't have any children. Can I tell you that you, as an aunt, as a friend, can have great influence in teaching children? I remember my dad talking about his aunt who had no children, but she was a great influence in his life is she taught him about God, taught him about the way that he should live. In that sense, you become a mother to those ones, those children that you have influence over. If you give yourself to God's word first, if you continue to preach about his power. And then also I'd say to our ladies, don't give up on God. You remember this task was given to Mary. She wasn't expecting it. It wasn't planned for. But she handled it with grace and dignity. And that's the way life is to all of us. We never know when a hurdle like this, a change of direction in life will occur. The fact is, is that we have our God. And we will need to continue to serve him all the days of our life. It could even be, unfortunately, the death of a child. But we overcome just like Mary overcame. She continued to serve her God. She continued to have one mind and one heart with those disciples. And I hope we at Millersville encourage each other to do that same exact thing no matter what obstacle comes in our life. Mary was not a mother who would let anyone or anything stop her. 
from doing what is right. And I hope that we, as parents, will not use any excuses, but will be, in a sense, all like Mary, because she lived a life that was pleasing to God and a great example to each and every one of us. If you have any needs before God, I hope that you will call the elders. They are there for you and they want to talk to you. If you've never rendered obedience to a child to being a child of God, I hope this day that you will realize that you need to give yourself over fully to the Lord and to his word. That's where it starts for any of us. And that if you have done wrong against God, then you'll repent of those things as you've already become a Christian. That's what God is wanting you to do. He's wanting you to repent. Come to him. Lay it at his feet. You might have a problem in life that seems like it is too hard to overcome. If you need help in any way that I can help you with, I'd ask you to please call me. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about anything that you have on your mind and in your heart. God wants us to succeed in life. God wants to save us. And so let's do our best for God this week, whether we are a mother, whether we are a father, whether we are preparing to be mothers and fathers. Let us go out and be the lights that we know that we should be before our God to please him. Have a blessed week. Number 760, who will follow Jesus? Jesus. finish with stand up stand up for jesus number 595 let's sing verses two and four of stand up stand up for jesus no stand up stand up for jesus Three.
Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate Keith for his timely lesson. Please remember all of those who are in need of prayer and encouragement. A bulletin is in your email today. Or it's in snail mail, if that's uh, what you chose. We know you're wondering when we'll get together again for worship at the building. It's on the elder's mind, and to that end, we will be meeting with the deacon soon to develop a plan, and we will pass that along to you. My thought for today, as we close out our service, is from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, now the context helps us to appreciate those who have gone on before and their spiritual service. Well, today is the day that we need to remember our mothers. And I'm especially mindful of mine for the great example that she left for me. And I hope and pray that you all have the same thoughts as we together remember Mama. We appreciate our Father in Heaven for the family plan and that mothers were made a part of it. We thank you again. And today, uh, we think of mother because in Philippians chapter 4, Paul tells us to think on lovely things. And I believe that mother certainly qualifies. I hope you have a blessed day. And let's pray together now as we close out our, our worship period. Father in heaven, we're so thankful to thee for this day and its blessings. We're so thankful, Father, for the love that you have for us. We're thankful, Father, that you sent your son to die for us and to give us hope of eternal life and forgiveness of sin. And we ask you, Father, to look down on us in mercy this morning and cleanse us from all impurities, that we might stand pure and justified before thee. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to worship even though it's electronic, we, we thank you for that feature that enables us to be together, even if we're apart. We thank you, Father, for, or we ask you, Father, to uh, help us remember those who are sick and those who need encouragement. And we ask you, Father, to bless us in our efforts to minister to them in whatever way that it might be possible. Father, as we count our blessings, we thank you for our mothers. And there are many other blessings, but today we're thinking about mother. Bless us all, Father, now as we strive to do your will. We pray, Father, that you'll truly be the king of our life. And we ask you to help us as we look for opportunities to serve and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Thank you so much for all that you do for us, and especially for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray.